Hi, welcome back to Cambridge Inside Out. I'm Judy Nathans. And I'm Robert Winters. We're continuing our, uh, our, our uh, parade, review, of, our parade of, of, of city council experiences. experiences here. Yes. So speaking of city council, maybe we should sort of touch upon that here. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and actually, let's just do one little quick one. So one thing that came back was part of the city council agendas last night was the return back from the state legislature of the approval of the home rule petition which to would allow them to reconfigure reconfiguration Inman of Inman Square and I, and I think the city manager as well as the mayor sort of tried to make clear that it, for those who uh, have uh, alternative proposals even if they're good proposals that they're really not on the table because well for a number they were of just going to vote on accepting that home rule petition accepting the home rule petition which does not actually mean that it has to happen right but in early october the city manager made a statement which says that i think it was either something like october 8th i can't remember for sure that there would be an appropriation request for six oh. approximately six million dollars so and then it, and, that's going to trigger and, and a lot of discussion. They, they all make pretty clear that we don't want to yeah. hear any alternatives we don't hear this is going forward or nothing so yeah that's kind of sad but yeah well, it's kind of, I mean, I don't want to be too critical about it. But, but there were a lot of meetings, and I guess a lot of people were in support of it, yes? You know, Cambridge used to, I think, correctly get some criticism for processing things to death. Yeah. Meaning any idea, including, like, for example, with the expansion or the, uh, the building of the new main library. Mm. Okay, so that that we, I was on so that library long. 21 committee, yeah. and then... You know, so then it got it's hashed and whatever. Years. So there was actually state yeah. funding that we lost because it, it we would have so cost busy. twenty million when it first came up, and then it ended up costing costing a far more. Yeah. And also mm -hmm. the grant money that was to be mm -hmm. available had we been a little. I more remember quick, that. You're right. Went mm -hmm. away. You know, so yeah, I think it's a problem when we over process things. Yeah. Um, yeah. But on the other hand, we we seem to be trending the opposite direction. Whether it's, I think it was sort of a byproduct of the last council term or two. Like for example. Um, put, rather than have a full-blown debate on a particular type of bicycle infrastructure, mm. it was like, no, we got to rush, we got to do it now, and don't Let's ask any questions, yeah. and then don't tell anybody. Right, and then afterwards, yeah. it was sort of like, okay, now everybody's mad about this and mad about that. Yeah. Whereas the old Cambridge would have processed it maybe too much. Yeah. And it maybe never happens. So now the opposite, we've gone the, the other through the other yeah. extreme of do everything fast and furious, even if it's bad. Uh, and then we'll just sort of deal with the re repercussions. By the way, I'm not saying in mid-square configuration that they have is bad. I do think there are some things that could be better, but, yeah. you know. Um, but it's just, it seems like it's sort of the way we seem to be doing business now. It's a, like discussions off the table, and I, I could give yeah, you some but, spectacular Yeah, but on mid-square, yeah. though, they did have a lot of meetings. Did yeah, they, but they you, claim there was they can multiple claim it all day public long, meetings but, but, and that there were a lot of community people. But what who happened liked is, it. is that people with the right mailing list packed the meetings and kind of. Well, made, but it wasn't just. I remember Phil's Brett calls. A lot of people lived there, liked it. Uh, well, maybe they just gave up. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, I yeah, you know, it's well, who knows, who knows. But so then, anyway, so that's basically a done deal for all intents and purposes. Really, you don't um, think the does the council have any final say about that? Well, they can vote to appropriate the money or not, and you know they're going to appropriate it because right. they always appropriate okay. it. Okay. So, um, right. so I think it's just a done deal. Uh, the, the only thing that's left is basically how are you going to accommodate the businesses, some of them are going to be put off by construction impacts and whatever, and may even lose some business. I will say, say one last little thing on configuration without obsessing about this. Mm -hmm. I, some idiot got up there and talked about last night about how we're going to be you know making buses much more efficient whatever be by having floating oh, a bus dedicated stops. bus line but they also mentioned floating bus stops oh i didn't hear that just in case you don't know what a floating bus stop I don't is, know what that is floating bus stop means that because we want to have the bicycle infrastructure at the curb we don't want the bus to pull up to the curb so right. we're going to ask the bus to stop right in the middle of the travel lane that's a floating bus stop oh so basically okay. sure yeah is that make the bus go f f short faster maybe it does and that's because he's backing up to travel but how do the behind. people get on the bus they, they walk cross... out into the street they walk across the bike, the bike lane. lane they hope they don't get whacked and then oh. they kind of hopefully the guy lowers the bus and then up you go and whatever oh boy I, you know personally i think the whole concept of a quote floating bus stop is ludicrous i didn't hear that part but yeah. hey they don't listen to me so hey that's the way it goes. I mean, that's kind of the traffic and parking is like, the you know. I wish, yeah, I wish people, this Ed Wall, I, every time I hear him speak, and I haven't seen the exact plans, it always sounds so much better. 
Yeah, I you mean, know, it, 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 it's a modified plan of what they're. I mean, doing. I, I don't want to yeah. see if we get too worked up about it, yeah. but the thing is, is that it's starting to get so. Who's got the loudest lobby? Yeah. And then the manager says, "Okay, we got to make sure the lobby is satisfied," and it's like it's not great. All right, but that wasn't the only thing that happened at the city no. council meeting. There were quite a few things. It was a relatively long agenda. The, the mainly because of the city manager, there's like 30 items or something. Uh, yeah, it was mainly things from the manager. Yeah, because uh, they hadn't met since July 30th. That's right. So, and most yeah. of the things that you get from the manager are just routine, like expenditures to cover this expenditures. and that. There were a lot of good appointments, yeah. you know, sort of notable appointments. And things. The stack of materials for the meeting was like about I, that I was going to say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you take one? I got one on uh, Friday, yeah. Okay. And so and they had a whole bo big box of these gigantic things the size of phone books. Wow. I don't think they really need to print that many, honestly. No. I would so, like the committee reports because I like. Those. Yeah, no, I actually yeah. hold on to some because I like yeah. having something paper Me for too. for some things. But there were certain things. So the probably the most um, t uh, the biggest thing, even though it's totally routine and non-negotiable, was they did the voting of the Community Preservation Act. Yeah, that um, was very funding. informative. I hadn't really paid much attention to that. I mean, I've been going to past. those since they started first starting doing it. But Why don't you explain what, exactly what that all is? All right, so the Community is Preservation Act. Yes. And what happened was about 2002 or through, around then, or maybe it was even earlier, but I think it was around then, um, the city, you know, first off, the state passed enabling legislation to enable towns to vote to accept this. There was a deal made at the time, which is that Cambridge was spending X amount of dollars on housing programs, and that this was going to be a budget neutral proposal. So in other words, we're going to take that money out of the regular budget. Mm -hmm. We're going to pass a, I think, believe it's a 3% surtax, which will increase, uh, you know, take in more money on top of your 3 taxes. 3% surtax on property on top of sold? Your property, on top of your property tax. Oh, right. Okay. And then so that the money that would come through CPA from the city taxpayers yeah. would match the amount that they reduce the budget for housing programs. Okay. So that was kind of the deal, so to sell it that it would be revenue neutral as opposed to a tax increase. But how long has the Community Preservation Act been in existence? So that went into effect about 2003. Oh, 2003. so it's relatively recent, the whole relatively, act? Yeah, but the thing okay. is, is that there was an understanding uh, even before it went in, that that the membership of the CPA committee, which is nine people, would be stacked by design to o strongly favor the mid the eighty the the maximum amount to go to affordable housing programs. So people and, on and that committee minimum, would be representing those right. programs. Now across the state, that's not how it usually works. You okay. have to spend it on open space preservation, yeah. historical or space open space acquisition. Historical so preservation, preservation or affordable housing. Well, that's the mix, but that's the percentage the is... It's minimum of 10%. For, for the historical... Right. Now, in, if you go across the state... I bet it's different. It's primarily like open space, historical preservation, and a little bit for affordable housing. Really? Right? Huh. In Cambridge, 80% uh, affordable housing, 10% historic, and 10% yeah. open space. And even in the historic preservation part, sometimes it's for preservation for oh, affordable so housing. For affordable. So yeah, they even all... push it, right? So that That's was the deal, right? Yeah. Now, now the truth is, is that in the early days, the city dollars would be matched by state dollars one for one, hmm. because there was this money that was uh, came from I think some transfers of or filing of deeds or I forget hmm. exactly the deal. But there was a kitty that was established from the state and a source. Now, if you if Cambridge or maybe one or two other towns were the only towns who were signing on to the Community Preservation yeah. Act. They're the only ones that had access to wow. the kitty. So we could get a one-for-one one match. Until everyone else found out about it. And then it. more and more cities and towns yeah. started signing on to CPA. And so then the, now we get about a 13%, not 100%, a 13% yeah. match. So, so it's the state mainly has state no town. regulations about uh, the towns that get it should be doing more affordable housing? They don't care? The, it's all stated in the law. It's a minimum of 10% for each okay. of these three, but you get to choose how to allocate okay. it as long as you meet the minimum. All right, so, so now we get 13%. Right, and on top of that, now Cambridge is also throwing more money back into the general budget for affordable housing in addition to the Community Preservation Act. So, so it's quite so a lot. Yeah. It is quite a lot. Now, you know, 
Yeah, now there's a lot of discussions we can have about the right ways and wrong ways to do this, but mm. but anyway, they passed it, and uh, you know, years ago, people would actually show up and say, "I think you should have more money for open space acquisition. Mm. I think you should have more money for this or that." After a while, the city kept saying 80, 10, 10, and that's yeah. that, and nobody even goes anymore. Right. But last night they had to vote on exactly where that 10 percent was going. Yeah, they had 21 what? actions or 21 22 projects. 22 votes actually. 22, yeah. So the thing is, is that there is um, the Community Preservation Act committee actually meets generally during the summer. Mm -hmm. There are uh, people propose various projects and they decide in putting the recommendations for uh, what the city council should fund. Right. So, so it's not just so the percentages; it's also the specifics. Right, and and okay, where so did Magazine those, Beach got some funds? Right. So, where does that come from? From lobbying, from community groups, from different people presenting and this, and from the Affordable Housing Trust, whatever. Okay. It's a, a little bit of an insider's game, to be perfectly yeah, honest. To know about it. And, yeah, you know. it's just a different way, a different pocket to take the tax money right. out of, it for all intents and purposes. But it has become the primary source of funding for affordable housing programs that the city does, yes. though not the primary source of affordable no. housing, which has really been, I think I can fairly say, is the inclusionary zoning that actually right. produces. Right, which actually, in that units. document that they sent out, on the second page, is a whole thing on, yeah. which yeah. I still don't How understand all of it, but it's you know, a biggest numbers at a glance, so don't, right. don't throw that out or recycle right. it, right. just look at one that. Of, one of the um, primary focuses of the Affordable Housing Trust has not just been building new, Right. It's also been preserving old, right. what the, we call expiring use housing. Affordable housing preserved or created yes. through city initiatives so since the end of, of the, rent control. A lot of the numbers in there are actually yeah. larger buildings that might have yeah. gone and just become market rate. Right. But for the fact that there was this intervention um, yeah, to make it few. so. Yeah. So, so anyway, so that's what happened. And, the, and I, in my recollection ever since we've been doing CPA the City Council has never deviated from the recommendations right at all for individual projects or even though I believe they have the authority to do so right like well a, they had to take a vote on each one so right but it's nine nothing nine nothing nine nothing 20 yeah. all, 22 votes nine nothing each. right right so anyway that was the biggest business you know uh, but it wasn't the only thing that was really going down uh, there as well well, they, they, they suspended the rules to bring forward um, the city managers, the whole thing about Inman and also the... Uh, right, so the thing right. is, is that, so they did have to formally accept the right. home rule petition. So the home, we make a home rule petition to the legislature, they say okay, but then it still has to come back to the city council and then they have to approve it. So was it approved? Or accept it. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so, um, so... But then, then what, right? So that, so now, as we was talking about before, Inman Square reconfiguration will now proceed with the parkland redesignated to another spot. So, so that whole thing with the petition and ceremony, that's all gone. There's no discussion. It, you know, a petition can sit. It'll sit on the table. Um, it hmm. doesn't really have any consequence because in something like this, you can't arbitrarily. In other, in other words, if you wanted to do a reconfiguration, you'd have to file a different home rule petition because of the, you know, I think. Now, I think that's it, arguable. It, well, I haven't seen his, the petition plan, whether it yeah. actually required reconfiguration. Right. So. I don't know. Anyways, but it, it, rega regardless. Regardless. I, I, the, I, I, I thought is, it. Is I, the manager's yeah. not going to change it. So no. that's, it's just done. So, you know, live with it and, and, uh, and, and continue to shop at Indian Square Businesses. Hmm. Right. Um, so that was kind of a big deal. Um, there was sort of moving along the process. I don't know that it was passed to a second reading or anything. I forgot because I might have been out of the room at the time. But there was a, um, a, a committee report having to do with um, the cannabis. I think it may still be in committee. I don't think the committee yeah. reported on a committee. Um, and, and that was the... Um, was that that would, actually, that, that was, was economic that was development. That would still have to go to ordinance to, okay. to go forward. But the planning board report did come back and said, yeah, it's okay. Oh, there was discussion so they, about that. they recommended some changes. So we'll see yeah. how that goes. So that, anyway, that's in process. That's one of the zoning petitions that's in process. Yeah. Uh, the rain, water, and flat roofs petition, which I think was really something Craig Kelly's been pushing. Yeah. Uh, and a guy named Nikolai uh, Kaushi uh, has been promoting. And this is like it's not his first time, first mm -hmm. pass at it. Um, that's in process. I don't know where that's going to go, but I'm going to tell you, I will say this. Um, 
uh, I have a triple decker with a flat roof. And because today we were supposed to be getting the remnants of oh, right. Hurricane Florence well, well, coming flash through, flooding, and we yeah. got some big rainfall. Yeah. Yesterday I had to go up the ladder and walk around on my flat oh, roof, and sure I am, and my knee was hurting, and oh, I had a dear. problem. But I had no choice. I had to go up there on the roof with a broom just to make sure that the drain was clear, just in case we got a lot so of. So how would this rainfall. help you? I don't think I would take advantage of it, but the but thing is, it if I wanted to reconfigure my roof so it wasn't yeah. flat pitching into yeah. the center and you so that it pitched it outward, yeah. which would require a little extra height, yeah. or you know, building up or some other reconfiguration. You couldn't just do that? I couldn't just do that as Why? a right, because it would, it would violate the height restrictions in the, in really? the zone that I'm in. Oh. So I would have to seek a variance or whatever. So. Um, the, zoning, the purpose of the zoning petition is basically to give people some options. Okay. And the thing is, is that it's it also kind of goes into the resiliency thing as well because, you know, this is water that's just going down into the MWRA sewers. Right. Right. So if you changed it, it would go off to the property, which might be a problem. Right. Or that you could, could redirect problem. some into rain barrels, but honestly, True. in a big storm, that rain barrel is going to fill up awful yeah. quick. There are other just it basically to me it's just about giving people a few more options. I don't know what's exactly the right solutions, but I actually think that something should come out of this. I hope. I can't believe that would raise the height that much that you'd have to get a variance. I mean, you I know, don't think it would change it that much. What, you know, you have to get a permit to so do what, anything right? on your property. Actually, well, you know, you? considering the fact yeah. that the city council is seriously going to be. Um, uh, discussing a 100% affordable housing overlay, oh, right. which will give 100% uh, affordable housing developers the right to build to a density up to four times right. anybody else. Right. So if you put it in those pr that perspective, if some homeowner wants yeah. to throw in five extra feet of height, yeah. oh, give me a break. Yeah, that's, right? I, I'd like to see where that's so, going to go anyway. You know, but I, you know, but if it's, unless it's affordable roofs, they're not going to even consider it, I guess, right? So. How, how many overlay proposals Oh, are my there? goodness. Uh, there's you know, a artist one? <laughs> You know, overlay dis housing, and there's a third one now, isn't there? Overlay, you know, I'm starting to think that yeah. the city council mm -hmm. and the city mm -hmm. is using overlays, how overlays of various forms, too much. You know, well, how does that equate with envision and the map? Is that connected? Are if you call something a, a a citywide overlay, yeah, then that's just called changing the zoning for the city. It's, like it's not an overlay. Plan. It's it, you yeah, know, it's it's. You know, I just wonder sometimes about the sanity of some of these votes. Well, we'll have to but, see how it shakes out with the final right. Envision report. Yeah, yeah right. we'll see how that goes. I will say that when I went to the Envision meeting on Wednesday, yeah, right? I went with that. And then on the housing working group, where I'm on that as oh, well. I went you to went on that Thursday. The next night, yeah. Well, I had to go teach a class, so I could only be there for the first 45 minutes. But you minutes. went to that. How but did I went that to go? It. it was the same presentation, so I didn't miss anything. Oh, that's right. They said they were so going to do that. So the city is yeah. actually considering three things. One is a, an affordable housing. 100% affordable housing overlay, mm -hmm. which in my view is actually noxious as written, um, in that it basically says if you're a homeowner and you want to do a little extra tweak, you can't. But if somebody buys that house next door, and if it's if it's a affordable housing, they can build four times well, as well, densely as written, you. This is written. This is actually in a report. It's a proposal. Yeah. But who did it? It's Where within Envision it? Cambridge. Oh, it's, it's also pretty Envision. much the same one. Oh. That the housing division people okay. are pushing through the uh, the housing committee. Wait, that's not the, the super council. inclusionary. No, 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 no. That was okay. the second one. Okay. That's, okay. So, so again, right already. By the way, the idea okay. about the the 100% affordable housing quadruple the density petition, somebody floated that on one of the neighborhood list and people went, "What? I yeah. ne we never heard about this." Yeah, that's, that's which was then followed by the Yimbies who said, "How dare you? You must be oh, an evil gosh. person. You're opposing so affordable housing." So this is going to be interesting. Which is when it totally comes not out. the point. Yeah. Right, it's about fair play, right? But the thing is, the second proposal they came mm -hmm. up with was about what they were calling a super inclusionary. Yeah. So right now, if you build building of ten units or more, uh -huh. you are subject to the inclusionary zoning, which, which is, is now twenty percent of the units must be affordable. No more density bonuses. It's just you got to do it, okay? So now they're saying, okay, oh, fine. They got rid of the density bonus, and now they want to put them back by saying if you. Uh, we have not just 20%, but let's say 
subsidized housing. But you get the height. When we'll give you extra yeah. density. density. If you go 35%, we'll give you even more. You go you, a little bit more. How so much we'll does it go? Step it up. Now, um, Again. I forget exactly what yeah. the maximum is, but they'll incrementally step it up. Now, I have to say, if you put that proposal up alongside the 100% affordable one that just basically gives certain parties mm -hmm. the right to do certain things and other parties not, yeah. which is totally unfair, yeah. the, the, um, the super inclusionary proposal is a legitimate incentive program that says, if you have a right to do something, we'll let you do a little more. If you give us, if you do 40, a little I think more, forty percent was the max. Right. Yeah. So the thing is, is so that's a logical, sensible, mm. discussable proposal. But it doesn't mean they automatically can do it, does it? No, it's an it's an opt in. So you are obliged to do twenty percent affordable. No, no, but I mean within. Can they build it like that in a neighborhood that, that as long as it's zoned that way, they could as do it. As long as it's zoned, and nobody to do can it. object to it. Um, there's no proposal. You can still, if it's a, if there are any special permits, then it would be a process. Okay, all right. One of the other noxious yeah. aspects of the so-called affordable housing overlay is that no objections are permitted. Really? It's oh. non-negotiable. Oh. The developer can do it, and because we don't want to slow down the, the, the Lord's work here, uh, <laughs> the thing is that we can't have some of those unruly neighbors questioning why, in fact, you're able to put a 40-unit oh. building next to my whatever. I don't okay. think that's going to fly. You know, the problem, I, I don't just, think it I should fly. I can't see the councillors voting for that. Oh, would... but there are some who will because, hey, it's affordable housing, and don't you know it's a crisis? So, And oh, it may be a crisis, yeah, but, the but the thing the, is, the, is the, that there's right ways and wrong ways yeah. to address it. My view, the super inclusionary is a much smarter way to do mm. it. There was a third proposal, which oh. is not specific to affordable housing, but it was that uh, since the city is trying to incentivize um, environmentally better buildings yeah. for the future, for yeah. resiliency, whatever, net zero, yeah. they said, so there's some proposal to, over years to phase in various net zero requirements. So they say, if you jump the gun and do it a little faster, You'll get we'll give you a little extra bonus. A little, you can mm. build a little more building to do that. But again, it's incremental right. and it's opt-in. So it's a good thing, you know. Now we can talk about the particulars, but yeah. of the three proposals, basically there was one which is just nuts, and then two that actually had something that I think mm. worth discussing. So, but we'll see how oh, it goes. Um, okay. You know, honestly, my opinion of the city council is going to very much be shaped by how what they, happens. How, how they there do is a housing committee meeting coming up in October that actually we can this go was, to. It's uh, not on yes, a Tuesday. Yes. And, <laughs> and this is on the agenda for that meeting. Oh, it is. Uh, oh, yes. I'm definitely. I well, I mean, I, you know, continuation of yeah. the idea about the affordable okay. uh, stuff. All right. Anyway, uh, plenty of other things. One thing, just sort of a little note in passing yeah. here on a resolution. There, you know, I, I do look at the ones of people who've passed away, resolutions of people who've oh, died, right, yeah. and people who've retired and whatever. There was one notable retirement, you know, for those of us who follow, follow political, which was, well, Bill Dwyer from yeah. Public Works is yeah. retiring, you know, who's been there right. forever. And, you know, and people need to understand, Public Works is like a little family there, you yeah. know. So, so maybe from the outside world, they might not take note of it all, but these are really significant things if you're in Public Works, or if mm -hmm. you've ever worked with Public Works. Um, so it matters. The other thing is the retirement of um, David E. Sullivan, who was oh, right. a he was a city councilor for five terms. Wow. Uh, I think uh, last he, he he didn't run in 1989, right? So, but he served right through '89, mm -hmm. uh, and he actually went out on the top. He was the top vote getter in his last election. Wow, that's right? unusual. Even besting Wal the great the, the late great Walter Sullivan. Wow. So um, yeah. that was quite something. Uh, yeah. That one David Sullivan bests. Walter Sullivan. I remember everybody was like, whoa, that's something. That is funny. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that was a sort of a notable point in there. Um, one thing that's, that's you know, is, is Councilor Toomey exercised his charter right for most of the policy orders. Uh, for whatever reasons, I don't know. I don't care really. Yeah, seriously. I, would, I, would, I didn't yeah. feel like staying there anyway. But the thing is, is one thing is, I think we mentioned, I think, um, was that the Santa Maria um, nursing facility out along right. Concord Avenue, that, almost at the Belmont Line? There was an order about that, wasn't there? There were two. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is that they're shutting, closing down shop at the end of the year, and, there's, and it's a pretty significant. They own their lot. They're trying to sell it, right? And it's a pretty yeah. big lot, and yep. it's it's very much in 
in or adjacent to the whole study area for the alewife um, stuff, you know, along on Concord Avenue. Um, so two proposals. One was Councillor Mallins who basically says we should create yet another overlay district out there for a senior living overlay district. Oh, that's the third one. Yeah. So now, now yeah. listen, I think it would be wonderful yeah. if we continue to have seniors living there. We have there. a lot of senior residences, don't we? I we mean, actually, we're pretty generous to seniors. And there we? are actually a lot of people with money who are actually moving to Cambridge as a place to retire. Yeah. So, um, but the city's actually taken on projects of creating um, uh, assisted living facilities for lower income people. In the city as well so you know we've got to take care of everybody mm -hmm. right you know or accommodate people whether they can afford it or not right so what's going to happen with santa maria i mean you know should it just become high-end condos with the with the necessary 20 percent affordable right mm -hmm. um should it be something else the alwife people were promoting um you know light industrial in there um i actually think for years people have talked about moving the public works yard and it, you know, well, not so the Sancta Maria. It would have been better in the in the quadrangle. Deeper, but the thing is, this is the part of the quadrangle. Well, it really is. It's within Cambridge. It's just north of Concord Avenue. Let me think between about that and the railroad this. track. That's it's just, true. It's just beyond. Right. Right. But I so, yeah. Okay. So anyway, Blanchard there's a discussion Road, yeah. that has to take place and will Good take point. place about yeah. this. Yeah. But already, so Councillor Toomey and Kelly and somebody else has an order saying we should build nothing but affordable housing in the Sancta Maria site. Councilor Mallon says no, it should be senior living, whatever, and well, who can knows? be both. It could be could both. Have senior right. living, and it could be yeah. like a continuum community with some spots for people. But it'll be it. something, and, yeah. and the thing is, is that uh, you know. But you got to get a developer interested in it that's going to do it. Otherwise, well, you're going to sell to the highest bidder, no? Right. In other words, the owners of the Santa Maria facility yeah. will. If they need to they'll make find money, a buyer. they'll make money. Just like Leslie bought the uh, Episcopal. Yeah, yeah. All right. So anyway, we're ending a, on a note of you need money. To we need money, money. yeah. Okay. So, and uh, <laughs> and and council, I'm sure Councilor Allen Devran will once again uh, file we'll file to bring back the Brown petition, but not not this week. All right, we'll see, see you, you next week. week. Bye.